Russian hackers reportedly targeted three U.S. nuclear research labs. So on top of solar winds, which we've talked about in the past, which accessed all five of the, uh, of course, military branches, including Space Force, uh, we now have uh, some new stuff coming out. It says Russian hackers have reportedly uh, targeted three nuclear research laboratories in the U.S. A group called Cold River carried out a fishing campaign against scientists at the Brookhaven, Argonne, and Lawrence Livermore National. National Laboratories last summer in an attempt to obtain passwords, Reuters reported. It says the efforts are believed to have been taken place in August and September around the time UN experts visited a nuclear power plant in Russia-controlled UKR. Uh, it said that to help prevent a potential disaster following a heavy shelling in the area. Meanwhile, President Vlad, of course, had alluded to a readiness to defend Russia-claimed territory with nuclear weapons. It says it's not clear whether the phishing attempts were successful or why the hackers were trying to gain access to the lab systems. However, Adam Myers, senior vice president of intelligence at cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike, told Reuters that, of course, Cold River is, quote, involved in directly supporting Kremlin information operations. So whether this is true or not, or if it's Ganda, either way, something went down here, and we're going to talk about it, and we're going to talk about a whole lot more. Of course, we're going to talk about uh, hackers and their involvement of, of all of this, and then uh, we're going to talk about all of the current events that have happened in the last 24 hours. So we will be right back right after this. Nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is again, one of the easiest. Download it, it's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do, go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. I uh, can't say thank you enough. What is going on, guys? It is Adam, a.k.a. Marf, and this is Marf Fugle News. Tonight is a call-in show, so anything can happen. This is a live show where we're going to go over all of the current events, and to keep you up to speed, we always make sure to have a full bibliography of every single article, tweet, video, picture, document we're going to go over here. This is a show where we're going to have a ton of information coming at you, so remember, you can always grab a second device or a tablet, and you can go over to marfuglenews.com and find every single source to the show. That way, as we are reading these articles, if we only hit the first part or if we hit the middle part or whatever and you want to go back retrospectively and check our work, you can always go to the website and find today's thumbnail. It's very easy to navigate. Just look for hackers. Could be the end of us or US. And of course, this is alarming. Now, this is just one of the events that has been going on right now as far as hacking, uh, as far as hackers have been able to get into some pretty serious things. And we don't know what is truth and what is Ganda, uh, what is meant to scare us, what is meant to uh, put you know a narrative to it so that's why we talk about it we read these out loud and then let the chat of course and thousands of people uh, make up their mind as well so when you go to the website you'll see that not only all of the sources are there but recently added a description of each article so that way if you do miss something you can go back and get the gist of it without even leaving our website again there's a ton there uh, it takes a lot of work so make sure to go check it out every single day at the very bottom there is an overflow section that is a yellow bar that says web content that is basically the stuff you wouldn't talk about at a bar or couldn't fit into the show if it's not important enough for the show or if it's too important for the show it is down there so make sure to go uh, check that out every single day it is definitely full of some really really spicy stuff and then, of course, let's bring in my co-host slash internet brother slash will be on the phones today at 2244 marf uh, Dex James, what is going on and how are you doing today? Hello, Adam, and hello, Fugle fam. I'm doing just fine. 
So Dex is going to be on the lines, and uh, of course the number to call is is going to be scrolling right down below. That's two two four four zero zero six two seven three. Now it scrolls about every uh, couple minutes here, and then of course both versions are there. So the the number right here is going to be with Marf on it. If you don't have a phone with the the letters on there, just just keep waiting. It will go back through. But it is two two four four zero zero six two seven three. When you get to our phone tree, you'll press option four. If we are live, we are live right now. Uh, it is now 7.15 p.m. on the 6th. If you're watching at any other day, then it is not live and you should not call in unless you want to leave a message. Uh, again, when you press option four, you will get Dex directly if he is free. All right, uh, and remember, first-time callers, definitely encouraged. Please give us a call. If you have videos, crazy ring footage, you can submit it at marfuglenews.com slash playmyvideo. You can also email us, adam at marfuglenews.com or dex at marfuglenews.com. If you have info regarding what is going on in, in Russia or anywhere else in the world, let us know and give us the info. Uh, we will try to pass it along if we can. All right, let's, uh, let's get right back into the news. And then remember, the phone lines are now open. So that is 2244 marf All right, so uh, and then let me make sure, let me turn the number on here so at least it's playing during this. Hold on. There we go. All right, and then Kilauea's uh, volcano eruption resumes. Alert uh, level has been raised, according to the USGS. So people were talking about this over the last week. Somebody said that last night, you know, it's erupting. It has been erupting. And, of course, Kilauea has been kind of the talk of the town for a couple of years now since uh, Kilauea went off the first time or, or sent off some smoke and lava and uh, some houses were destroyed and things like that. Uh, it says the Kilauea volcano in Hawaii began erupting on Thursday. The U.S. Geological Service volcanic activity notice said after detecting a glow in the summit, producing smog that is confined within the Hawaiian uh, Volcanoes National Park. It says the volcano alert level was raised to red after an evaluation of the eruption and associated hazards, the notice said. USGS said that the volcanic gas, which consists of sulfur, dioxide, and other gases, which could produce a visible haze of volcanic smog, known as VOG, which has also been uh, observed in the downwind of Kilauea. VOG has the potential to generate airborne health hazards for residents and visitors causing breathing difficulties and also damaging uh, agricultural crops. So VOG is something we covered in depth. If you want to go back to previous episodes, just type in VOG on our website and you'll actually get back to the previous time that Kilauea uh, went off and we uh, went into detail on that. Known to be the younger and more active neighbor of Mauna Loa, which erupted in November for the first time since 1984, the Kilauea volcano has been erupting since 2021. Again, in 2021, two years ago, we covered all of that, and it was pretty nuts. There were a lot of videos, of course, of uh, lava taking out houses. It almost looked like a flood or you know, some sort of tsunami carrying things, but it was lava uh, doing that instead. A lot of crazy videos, even from Fugal fan members, showing the lava was right at their property line, and there's basically nothing you can do. It's not like you can put sandbags, because those sandbags will most likely be turned into diamonds. I don't know. Uh, is that a strategy? I don't know. However, Mona Loa's eruption had no impact and remains quiet, USGS said. So there are two different, uh, well, there's two different extremes here. A lot of folks online and even on TikTok and, and other social medias are saying that uh, the whole ring of fire is about to go and there is a uh, pole shift and uh, the, the uh, disaster's coming, Yellowstone's about to go off. And then on the other extreme, you have some of the scientists and, and different people that are, you know, of course, uh, talking about how it's always going off, which I think that there's kind of a piece in the middle where I, I, I kind of uh, would think that right now the ring of fire historically every year it seems like there is some sort of big event in the ring of fire but is it any more than usual let me know what you guys think in the comments down below uh if you have qualifications to talk on this i would love to have you on the show give me a call at 2244 marf and then if you are in Hawaii and you have footage of any of this, send it our way, marfuglenews.com slash playmyvideo. Thank you, everybody that has already popped into the chat. It looks like we have a great number of people here. Terry West, CJ Blaze, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, Sergeant Bob, Kelly2334, thank you for being here. Uh, Miss Start Wigs, uh, Lord Andrew, Stealth Mode, Poco Loco, Sassy Gal, says Yellowstone will not go off. Other stuff, yes, but not Yellowstone. 
So one thing to think about, and when I interviewed Chris Goldfinger, one of the lead seismologists of the Cascadia Subduction Zone, uh, that was kind of a freaky conversation to have a few years ago. And because I asked one of the questions that a lot of us have, have thought about and, of course, has changed over the years, which I said, if the Cascadia Subduction Zone goes, which it is going to be a 9.0 uh, earthquake in the northwest and it's going to go all the way from basically Canada to the beginning of California uh, someone will feel a 9.0 in Seattle uh, that same person standing in Portland Oregon will feel that same 9.0 earthquake and basically everywhere in between is going to have then 15 minutes later possibly a 120 foot plus wave uh, coming at them and even the FEMA director said that uh, that it would possibly have everything west of I-5 would be toast. Uh, they didn't say possibly, said everything west of I-5 would be toast. Now, Chris Goldfinger actually has his own TED Talk on the subject and how crazy serious the, the Cascadia subduction zone is. But in that interview, I asked him, I said, hey, does it make sense that if the Cascadia went, that either another earthquake like the San Andreas could go off or uh, even Yellowstone? And what's crazy is he said 20 years ago, they would have said you're nuts and that's complete falsehood and no, there's no relation whatsoever. But he said now scientists can absolutely prove there's no debate on it that an, a big earthquake on one side of the planet can actually cause any kind of event, whether it be in the ring of fire or a volcano or uh, another earthquake somewhere else. They can directly connect that now and they know for a fact that one big earthquake can cause another big earthquake. And when you think about it, if you believe what they say, of course, that uh, it's all, you know, these plates, if one shakes up, you would think somehow they're connected underneath and at some point it would cause something else somewhere else. As far as Yellowstone, though, there are uh, there's a camp of people that literally believe that that will be the end of us. Uh, for for whatever reason, though, you haven't really heard much about Yellowstone, and the only time you do is when one of these uh, articles comes out and says that you know they think we're overdue or this or that, and then people kind of go on this roller coaster of being scared about it. I don't think that Yellowstone is our biggest threat, but I also, as a prepper, think that it would be smart to think about it because it would take out a third of our country. Um, as far as a big volcano in Hawaii going off like this, that could trigger other volcanoes as well. So we're paying attention to it and we'll follow it all the way through. If you see anything weird that we should be covering uh, regarding Yellowstone or Cascadia, let us know. There's been a string of earthquakes recently on the uh, subduction zone so people are definitely watching that very carefully um, and then mysterious antennas are appearing in utah's hills and officials are stumped so i saw a comment right before the show and i forget who said it but it was actually a really smart comment uh and i'm not saying to do it but they said i bet if those uh if those antennas were knocked down you could pretty quickly see who comes to put them back up and it's kind of true if, if because right now there's no official answer for it. And even the officials are saying, we don't know. Uh, kind of nuts. And if you think about it, there are giant antennas. City officials have found about a dozen of these antennas and not sure what they're for. Strange antennas have appeared in the footholes, uh, foothill, foothills around Salt Lake City, and authorities have no idea what they are or who put them up. As first reported by KSLTV in Utah, it said people first began noticing antennas a year ago. They're simple machines made up of Laura fiberglass antenna, a locked battery pack, and a solar panel to power it. The Salt Lake City Public Lands Department has been pulling them down as they find them and told KSL TV that there have been as many as a dozen. It's illegal to place structures on public lands without permission and some of the antennas have appeared on steep peaks. In one instance, the removal of an antenna required a team of five people. Other antennas were found on land managed by the University of Utah and the Forest Service. Neither immediately responded to the motherboard's request for comment. Says our trails team and Foothills Rangers have found some unauthorized solar panel towers in the foothills. Salt Lake City Public Land said in a post on Facebook, if you have information about these towers or who they belong to call the their office it says a leading theory online is that the antennas are part of a cryptocurrency mining operation helium is a type of cryptocurrency that uses antennas to create long-range wide area network 
Uh, and it says that instead of a proof of work, helium relies on a proof of coverage. The wider the network, the more helium you're mining. Helium mining requires the exact kind of antenna shown in the photos of the devices recovered by Salt Lake City authorities. There are plenty of articles online instructing people how to create solar-powered rigs for helium miners to deploy in rural areas. And helium miners are fond of bragging about the elevation of their antennas. So it could be related to cryptocurrency. Here's a photo of what they look like. Uh, this is the setup. It almost looks like one of those... Uh, it literally looks like one of those lot cops that they're putting in Walmarts. Uh, let's see here. The new antennas are a distraction. The real ones are already installed and are doing the dirty deeds, Eric Keenan. Yeah, I think, we, yeah, everywhere, right? The, the new generation. Central Washington University in live geology classes. My favorite professor's video on YouTube. Uh, let's hear Shastina. Hello, Fugal family. Watching on TV and chatting on cell. But a few seconds behind. LOL, working as I listen. Hey, Shastina. Nice to see you here tonight. We've got lots of regulars here. We've got, of course, our wonderful mod, CJ Blaze, holding it down with Ilea. Uh, T. Rose, San Diego Scott, says a bullet hole already. Uh, Serena, call their office with any if, uh, info. Serena, Sarah. Uh, let's see here. M Mary Miles, Nate Dampier, CJ Blaze, Bobby Sue. What else could they be for? Can you guys think of any uh, other ideas? Could it be a military op? Could it be something else? Could it be uh, set up for something else to communicate after some sort of event? It says they've been doing it for the last year. So obviously nothing that's too pending. Let's see here. Uh, Joseph, what's going on? We've got CB3, Beth L., and Connecticut regular Yankee here. What's going on? Repeaters. That's actually what I first thought when, uh, the second I read it. And I know that some of the repeaters have been taken down. Uh, you know, as far as ham radio or the repeater towers uh, in California, at least I heard that that was a thing. Hashtag Red Dawn says Delta Hawk. I hope not. Uh, communication stealth mode. What, what what if it is something where they're getting ready for something? And why in Salt Lake? Uh, why in Salt Lake? And they look like pretty simple antennas if you look at it. And somebody said bullet hole. Is, did somebody take a pot? It looks like somebody hit it with a baseball, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, what do you guys think? Let me know. I'd love to hear your opinions. Put a comment down below what you think it could possibly be and why you think it would be in Salt Lake City and specifically where it is on these peaks. Is it for mining helium or is that the cover? It's very odd to say the least. Give us a call at 2244 marf if you have a thought on it. Let us know. And then Mr. McCarthy finally flips Republican Rebels in 12th ballot defeat. It says that Kevin McCarthy finally flips Republican Rebels in 12th ballot defeat after his supporters walked out in protest of Matt Gates. It says turning point on fourth day of House farce as ha hardliners back the GOP leader after make or break talks. It says a majority of Republican rebels finally flipped their votes to Kevin McCarthy during his defeat in the 12th ballot for Speaker after his supporters walked out in protest of Matt Gates and following crucial negotiations over concessions on Friday morning. In a startling development, the GOP leader won more votes than he has seen in the last four days of the farce after his party held a conference call to try to strike a deal with the hardliners who have sunk his bid. McCarthy managed to pick up 14 of the 21 who who had previously objected to his bid for speaker, leaving him short of winning the gavel. Uh, basically, they called and said, "How much? How, uh, you know, how much do you need? Uh, what do we need to put in your bank account? What do, What do my uh, secret investors need to pay you?" I'm assuming. Uh, let's see here, and it says the rest of the dissenters were split between Representative Kevin Hearn, uh, Republican out of Oklahoma, Chair of the Conservative Study Committee, and Representative Jim Jordan, a Republican out of Ohio, both of whom themselves back McCarthy. The rebels flipped after McCarthy made more con concessions in the package that includes on lawmaker term limits and border security, the motion to vacate the Speaker and more roles and House committees. So it's like, it, obviously, if... You know, a lot of the movies and shows like House of Cards, they you, you think that that's like super exaggerated. I don't know if there really are. Uh, there's so many back deals going on right now or backdoor deals going on. I would assume if all of these people had so many objections, it was just basically kind of like how Elon hasn't paid rent for 136000 when he's a, almost a trillionaire to negotiate a better rate. 
uh, or, you know, how, uh, you know, you don't pay somebody or you don't do this so you get a better contract. Uh, they, I think they were just waiting for a bigger paycheck. Dex, go ahead. Uh, they're back in, um, I think about 20 minutes ago, they were called back for the session and they're doing the next round. So we may find out tonight uh, if they, they actually think they have enough to uh, get him in and get through this, uh, this, this last round. Uh, otherwise, I guess it'll keep going. This just, it, you know, it's, it's rare that it happens like this, but um, we may know later tonight, maybe in about an hour. A lot of people call him a zoo animal uh, as far as which one you guys can. It, it's the one with horns. Uh, I believe the one that charges. Yeah. So not many people support him in our audience. That's for sure. And then son of El Chapo held in top security prison at, in Mexico after 29 perished in an arrest operation. So just so you guys know, he actually previously got arrested uh, it, or was it, it was him or it was his dad. No, it was him. And the president of Mexico actually released him. Uh, so, it, again, it says arrested drag, uh, drug cartel leader Ovidio Guzman, the son of Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, is being held in the Output Plano uh, Maxima Security Federal Prison. An official said Friday following an intense operation in northern Mexico that led to the perishing of 29 people. It says Guzman's early arrest uh, early Thursday morning prompted chaos around the city of Culiacan as authorities urged members of the public not to leave the city while administrative activities were suspended. It said his arrest was the result of a lengthy operation which involved 200 special forces. Defense Minister Luis Crescencio uh, Sandoval said Friday local officials urged citizens to shelter at home with clashes uh, and the cartel members in various parts of the city. Basically, when this stuff happens, people are told, like, stay in your home. Uh, people are just going to be snatched off the street and grabbed because uh, there's this whole big thing. By the way, I believe that this is all money as well. I think that uh, obviously three letter agencies all around the world work with these criminals and these nasty people. Uh, and it's all about money. Everything is about money. It says at least 19 suspected gang members and 10 military personnel dur uh, perished during the violent clashes. And think about if your family member was one of those military members that died for basically a cause that they know that after this happens, they get him in, that he could be released to avoid further bloodshed. It's not the principle. It's like they literally control uh, the the government. I mean, it's crazy. It says, after authorities arrested Guzman along with 21 others, no civilian perished or injuries were reported. It says security at Altiplano Prison has been increased since Guzman was detained. These are the kind of guys that in real life get uh, broken out. Remember, we talked about it yesterday, but there was an, an actual scene where uh, they've had, you know, the cartel go with armored vehicles and go to try to break people out. I mean, it's nuts. It says Guzman was described as a high-ranking member of the Sinaloa cartel in a statement issued by the United States Department on December 16. He was previously arrested by federal authorities in October 2019, but was released on the order of President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador to avoid further bloodshed. You're talking about like when they arrest somebody... The, the cartel is so insane. And, and by the way, it's, to avoid further bloodshed, he probably got a big old check. I don't know about Obrador. I don't follow their politics too closely, but I know enough to know that, uh, of course, yes, it could be that they wanted to avoid just random people off the street getting pulled off and taken out and, you know, their heads left in the street and all sorts of other stuff. But at the same time, it's like the actual president said, oh, just go back out and continue your cartel activities so we don't have random citizens taken or this or that. We don't know what the real thing is, but we know that three-letter agencies have worked with these cartels for decades and have allowed their actual activities to go on as long as they get a cut. Uh, as far as they've even been armored and handed out things through three-letter agencies. Uh, but it's crazy to me to think like, they, they'll take collateral damage in any other country in the world or if we're in a, uh, a conflict they will take collateral damage anywhere else but for for this gentleman they basically let him out uh just in case because they were going to attack it's crazy that mexico is literally uh can make the president bend over for them uh that cartel is that strong and by the way that cartel is connected with almost every country in the world 
I don't even want to talk about him. I, I don't want them coming after me. Uh, Guzman's father, El Chapo, had escaped from El Plano uh, prison on July 11th, 2015, but was captured and convicted in the U.S. four years later of 10 counts, including engaging in a continual criminal enterprise, drug trafficking, and firearms charges. He was sentenced to life in prison plus 30 years and ordered to pay $12.6 billion in forfeiture. The state of Sinaloa is home to one of the most powerful narcotics trafficking organizations, the Sinaloa Cartel, of which El Chapo was the leader. The arrest of Ovidio Guzman comes days before U.S. Prez and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau visit Mexico City to attend the North American Leaders Summit. Capturing Guzman could be a way for La Prez uh, Obrador to show the U.S. that he is in control of the armed forces and Mexico's security situation. It says it also diffuses the power behind any ask from the B administration to stem the tide of the Feni that's coming in and other narcotics that are going across the border. There is a lot of money moving across uh, different hands right now. This is all shady. I would say I'm not an expert on this, but it's it's common sense that we know that there are multiple parties, probably politicians involved, and all sorts of nasty, nasty characters. So... This is straight out of a movie. Like I said, we are living in a movie almost every single day. Uh, Jennifer Gilbert, what is going on? Paul Stasny, Laura Griffith. Thank you, Northern Girl Hobbies, for being here. And then thank you, everybody that has already popped in. Blue Boy and Danish Girl, thank you for your support last show, along with Swetna Ministries, Charles Jenkins, Carrie Ray, and Eric Danzelson. Thank you so much for your support. And I just want to shout out, thank you, Kenny Crowder. I appreciate that. It says, good evening, Adam. Dex Mods and Fugal Fam. Thank you, Kenny. Again, Kenny is actually one of my old first subscribers. Aren't you number five or something? Uh, Carol Mc or, or maybe eight. I don't know. Is that's that's you, right? Number five. Carol McLean, what is happening? Thank you for your support. Mirror 504. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Make out with chaos. Uh, it says, thank you for providing news with the level head. My 20-year-old daughter loves listening to y'all as well. We're big fans of Adam, Dex, and Mods and the Fugle fam. Make out with chaos. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, and I, I'm glad that there's somebody under 24 watching. Uh, Next Exit says, I received the Alexa Pure Pro last week and love it. Next Exit is, is awesome. Make sure to get extra stuff for it again if you're planning to do the long haul. And then Nana of Montana, thank you, thank you, and thank you for the massive super sticker, 40, $49.99. Thank you. You didn't have to do that, Nana, and I appreciate you. Uh, Heath Spear, thank you, from Australia. Uh, and then Carol McLean, thank you for uh, the Tweety Bird uh, super sticker there. All right, and then remember today is a call-in show if you joined us late. 2244 marf You can call in right now. Uh, make sure to press option four when you get to our phone tree. 12 terrorism suspects nabbed sneaking across the southern border, according to DHS data. So, by the way, this is these are the ones that were caught. Um, we Everybody is so confused, and they don't know what to believe and what not to believe. But essentially, anything like this, they believe, oh, it's just an op, or it's this, or it's that, or it's psyop. There are real people that will do damage to massive amounts of people. There are real groups that their sole purpose is to take other people's lives away and to prove a point with it. Uh, those do exist. Uh, obviously, those are tainted with the people that are in three-letter agencies that are involved with all of these different groups. And But one thought to think of is that these were just the 12 that were nabbed. Uh, well, all this stuff with the cartel is going on, well, all of these other things are going on, that could have been a big distraction for something else. Uh, not to mention with the Title 42 and everything that happened before, you had thousands upon thousands waiting uh, for that to end, and then they had temporary reprieve and all this stuff that happened. It says, bef it says Border Patrol agents caught 12 illegal immigrants in November whose names popped up on the T-watch list. Of course, being this crazy word that nobody can say on a plane, watch list according to a new data revealed this week by the Department of Homeland Security. It says what's up from nine T-cell suspects nabbed in October and brings a total of 21 first through the first two months of the fiscal year. Uh, being the, the budget year. It says, uh, what is well above the pace of last year, which uh, set a record of 98 suspects nabbed. 
By contrast, from 2017 to 2020, roughly, uh, roughly matching the years of the T-Man administration, uh, Border Patrol agents caught a total of just 11 suspects at the southern border. 11. That's pretty insane, considering that was all of those. It says the new numbers were revealed just as President B prepares to make his first trip to the border as Prez on Sunday, and he is expected to tout his plan to welcome some parents through the newly created immigration system while embracing the T-Man era tools to block others from gaining a foothold in the U.S. So it's crazy to me that he still has not even been there yet. He has not gone down and actually seen what it looks like. That is one of the biggest critiques against him. I'm surprised that, you know, a year and a half ago, he didn't go down there to quiet the, the people screaming at him to go down there and look at it. I mean, you know, AOC and other people have even gone down there before him. Uh, as far as uh, the what's going on down there, it is pretty insane. Uh, obviously, they're understaffed, but also probably overpaid. Uh, in some cases, there's a lot of these guys that are corrupt and let things go by and turn a blind eye. We're talking about people that would literally take out massive amounts of people if they had their way. And we are always looking at what could be the next uh, 2001, whether it be planned by an actual group or by three-letter agencies. Who knows? Uh, but one of these events, a Fantastic Freddy of a massive proportions, is what they're warning us is going to happen. And by they, I mean DHS, uh, DOD. They have all these different warnings going on saying that something is going to happen. That's why most of us are just kind of watching and waiting. It says border experts say the rising number of T suspects detected is worrying because it signals there are probably more getting through. They say that these that are getting caught either made a mistake or didn't know that they were on the watch list. November saw Border Patrol agents uh, make 206,000 arrests of people crossing the southern border, border illegally, a record for the month. Over 200,000 people in a month. How many is that per day? What is 206,000 divided by 30? That's incredible. Uh... And think about how many people perish on their way on the the horrible trips that do that. Give us a call 224400MARF. I'd love to hear from you. Again, the phone lines are open. And we have Mr. Gentle Moss, a first-time caller on the phone. Uh, well, we get Mr. Gentle Moss on the phone. I do want to remind you guys, if you do want to protect your vehicles, your trucks, your ATVs, your four-wheelers, your ham radios, and even your house uh, from an EMP strike, then you can do so with an EMP shield. This is the same company that's outfitting agencies like DHS, DOD, and of course the Demso team helping protect the Texas grid. You can actually get protection from solar flare as well. So a Carrington level event hits. If you have this wired into your car, which takes about 10 minutes, it will actually ground the signal of either the EMP or the CME in less than 500 trillionths of a second before it's able to fry your device. Go to marfuglenews.com slash EMP not only to get $50 off per device, uh, but you'll also be supporting our independent channel. We're on our own, and we're literally in a space where we're not treated equal. So thank you, everybody, that shares us out. That is the most important part. Share us with your friends. Share us with your family. Share us with your coworkers. I really do appreciate it, and I do notice when we get new people, they all say who ended up bringing them in. So thank you so much. Go to marfuglenews.com slash EMP and protect yourself. It's a veteran-owned business, and it's 100% American-made down to the screws. All right, and then uh, let's get our next caller on. It looks like Mr. Gentle Moss. Adam, I need one second. Okay, no problem. And they're calling from New Hampshire. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no, I just read. Uh, not going to be, not going to be, it's not, not a, not a great call. I don't know if, um, any of you guys on, uh, most of you know, Gentle Moss. Not looking, uh, not looking forward to this. And Adam, uh, Mr. General Moss is now live on the line. Hello. Hello, sir. You are live on Marfugal News. Hi, Marf. Um, I wanted to call you and let you know 
the channel must die. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to hear this, and she's been a part of this for years now. Yeah, we used to watch the show. <clears throat> I know she'd get a big kick out of seeing the Lego set behind you. When did this happen? Uh, she had a heart attack December 5th, and um, we took the tube out December 8th. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that she was alive after that. They just kept her breathing with a tube. Well, sir, I lost my mom the same way. Um, where it was kind of the same thing, where they kept her breathing past, and and you didn't know if if uh, she was actually present there or if she'd already gone. Uh, I just want to say, General yeah. Moss made a difference here. I know that a lot of a lot of people here really love Jenna Moss and she was is such a sweetheart and she was a wonderful part of this Fugel family and running the show like I just said the other day you get to know people and there are so many people and it's just the odds are you're going to lose friends and I I, um, I believe you probably just lost your best friend I know, yeah, we used to listen to your outro, your shoutro, and uh, you always get a kick out of when you mention her name. I'm so sorry. I just wanted the Fugle family to know she passed. I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, can we, what can we do for you? Can can we? Um, uh, is there anything we can do for you? I don't. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I. I don't. It, this. Well, sir, we would love to offer doing. Um, uh, you know, if we could at least show some photos and and a memorial for her if you would like, and and I know there's a lot of people that will help give them closure. General Moss has been here since I, I'm pretty sure since I started. So, um, pretty good. it's up to you though. Yeah, uh, um, I have the phone number now, so I, I can, when I, I haven't been able to go through the pictures yet. Can we, can we talk to you off air? Can I talk to you off air? Sure. Okay. Well, I'm so sure. sorry. You can call me any. I'm so sorry, Mr. General Moss. No. I I just wanted you to know. Well, well, thank you for letting us know. And again, the whole Fugel family is pr uh, praying for you. There's nothing anybody can that can anybody can really say right now to make you feel better. <clears throat> Hasn't worked so far. <laughs> well, we're here with you, and. I hope that you become more active and we can obviously um I know that there were a lot of people here that you really liked and uh followed so unfortunately she listened to your advice and uh password protected her operating system so I couldn't get all her information back but oh no um, uh, I can redownload it and start over Well, maybe that's something. Maybe I don't know what what Fugel fam would be able to do to help you with any of that. But what we can do is we can remember her and I, I maybe even tell her story. I, I really hope that you understand you have a really great people, a gr group of people around you, and we all have your back. No, I I know that she was she was more the one who stayed home and did all that stuff and. Uh... I just want to learn the money. It's a whole learning process to get all through all the stuff she did. Now, do you guys have kids together? Not together. We have kids separately. Well, 
we'll be praying for both and, of uh, your kids. I'm sure that's really rough for him right now. He did get to see. My son just had a daughter, and she did get to see him, uh, her, before he died. So we have a, a picture of the four generations, which is nice. Good memory before she died. Well, I there's not. I I just wish there was. Um, I guess you know you never know and, and until it's too late. And you you know I guess we're not going to have more chances to get to know her as a person. But I hope that we can get more time to to get to know you. And I I really hope that we can help you in any gaps that you might have in being able to do what she was doing for you guys. I guarantee you, the Fugel family, that there's plenty of people who will help you uh, in the learning curve as far as, you know, trying to keep stuff how she had it. It's a lot, and she probably spent a lot of time yeah. doing it. I know that she spent a lot of time doing prep, uh, learning how to prep and doing all sorts of other things. Uh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Well, sorry to throw you off your game. You were You were really on a roll there. No, uh, that's not, that's not a, I don't care. That's, um, well, let us, can I talk to you off, off air and I'd love to chat with you. Yeah. I mean, you can call me, you know, tomorrow or something if you want. I'll be home all day. Okay. Well, I'll call you tomorrow. Um, I'm at, what, what time zone are you in? Uh, Eastern Standard Time, New Hampshire. Okay. Well, I'll call you early afternoon in Pacific, so before uh, Saturday, so you, you probably don't work, huh? No, I, you know, Sabbath. All right, well, uh, Mr. Yeah. General Moss, I am so sorry for your loss, and let's try to figure out something we can do and and uh, try to celebrate what she was. She really is a, just, she was the sweet, sweetest person around, so thank you so much for letting us know, and um. Yeah. You you have a journey ahead I know, of you. There's not a lot of words. No, there's not. Thank you, Moss. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Gentle Moss, and we appreciate you and love you, and I hope you have a whole a whole family around you that uh, are supporting you through that. I know there's nothing we can say. Mr. General Moss from New Hampshire, uh, we love you, and uh, we're here for you. I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. Thanks, Mark. Yep. Bye. Yeah, it's on Hulu. Let's see. I want to say I just got a message from her, too. Um just real quick, uh, just wanted to do a quick moment of silence for Gentle Moss. She's been in the Fugel fam for now years. I hope that I know that there's people in New Hampshire too. If there's folks that want, um, he's basically General Moss was doing everything for their, all of their prep and all of their stuff. And she was really, really educated in that respect because she was closely following it. So, uh, I really wish we had our group still open. All right. Well, let's go back to the news. Call us at 2244 marf Again, that's 2244 and I just, I pray for you. I pray for you to heal very quickly. And I pray that she is with Jesus right now. And God bless you. Yeah. Uh, 
we've lost some really good people the last two years. So, and then back to the news, U.S.-China tensions, Washington moles placing its soldiers in Japan under new unified military command. As the security threat from regional foes continue to rise, the United States is reportedly looking to reorganize its troops deployed in Japan to achieve better integration among its services and enhance coordination with the Japanese Self-Defense Forces, or the JD, uh, JSDF. Uh, again, it says, according to a report published by Japanese media, Manichi Shimbun, which cited multiple unnamed sources, the United States is working on a plan to place all of its forces in Japan under a new unified local headquarters inside of an aegis of the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command. Currently, the functions of the U.S. Japan, U.S. Forces Japan headquarters based at Yokota Air Base are restricted to administrative roles. The USFJ headquarters coordinates discussions with the Japanese government and SDF, uh, besides managing the implementation of the status of forces. Just to break this down, uh, they are now they are now deciding of putting more troops in Japan. I have to say it's pretty simple to see. We're not in great times right now, and that's why it's really important that everybody uh, take this up. You know, in the case of somebody like, uh, you know, Mr. Gentle Moss, I think a lot of families are like that where there's one main person in the family that looks after that. And if they're, you know, if they're not around anymore, then um, not all, not every time does somebody pick up the slack. But I do think that mo more people would uh, benefit from picking up on just basics as far as getting prepared for disaster Almost all of us have been through a major disaster in our life. The thing is, is if you do a little bit at a time, you'll be so much better off. You don't have to just devote your life to prep and go move out to a, a container, you know, container home in the desert and, you know, dig an underground shelter. You can do little things to ensure a, you know, a, be a better life for yourself in the case of a disaster, whether it be losing our power or, you know, uh, any kind of financial collapse or any kind of earthquake or any uh, physical disaster. Right now, it's pretty clear Japan is a huge part of this. We've been saying watch Japan. Japan has done a lot in the last three months that is obviously gearing towards a war. They were a huge part of World War II, and I believe they're going to be a huge part of World War III. It says, along with fortifying the current headquarters at Yokota Air Base, the Indo-Pacific Command is reportedly considering establishing a new joint headquarters covering all units in Japan. However, Eurasian Times could not independently verify these claims. It says, in addition, to the Indo-Pacific Command has been reviewing its chain of command in response to China's year uh, years-long military buildup. It says the U.S. to move to constitute a local headquarters and assimilate its forces. Based in Japan comes after the Jap Japanese government announced plans to create a unified command of the self-defense forces that would merge the operations of all branches. The said command is to come into force by fiscal uh, year of 2027, which actually starts in 26. It says currently the Joint Staff Office of the SDF commands all three forces and is overseen by the Chief of Staff who is the only point of communication with the Japanese Prime Minister and the U.S. military. The Rijig strives to change this decentralized responsibilities and creates an umbrella structure for better integration and interoperability. Basically, the U.S. troops, they're about to, they're about to insert themselves into a world force. There's a lot of signs we're about to be into some big conflict, and they're all right in front of us. And then Chinese military experts alarmed by U.S. forces' capability to launch cruise missiles from cargo aircraft. When we first talked about this, of course, the obvious kind of popped out. Why are we launching nukes from cargo aircraft? Well, the fact is, uh, China is building up their air force like we've never seen before. And they have stolen designs from us. Uh, they have a lot of jets. They have a lot of things. As far as they're number two in size, right? Well, as far as Navy goes, they're number one. They're actually the largest Navy, and they're shooting for the largest Air Force. The U.S. looked at the uh, on paper and said, okay, at this time, they're going to actually surpass us in Air Force. 
And they also said, well, we don't actually have enough ways to do this and to to f fight back if they get to this level. And even if we put the money in right now, which instead of sending it somewhere else, they could have put it back into, you know, catching up or keeping them surpassed. I believe that they ended up doing this cargo aircraft thing because, well, we have tons of cargo aircraft. And every single one of these cargo aircraft, which, I mean, you could literally take a FedEx, uh, you know, a FedEx uh, cargo aircraft, and then the United States government can say, hey, this is ours now. They can drop one of these things out the back while they're flying, and it can actually launch a nuke. The, you're supposed to have this humongous force. No matter what happens, they can basically get back to them. And I think that that's why they were trying to reinforce this. But it says the Chinese military leaders appear alarmed by the novel tactics employed by the U.S. Air Force. In particular, the U.S. Air Force's efforts to launch cruise missiles out of cargo aircraft have been perceived as a worrying development by military experts in China. It says last year, November 2, USAF MC-130J commandos successfully conducted a live fire demonstration by deploying a joint air to surface standoff missile or a JASM using the Rapid Dragon palletized weapon system. So they drop a pallet off of the plane, it then breaks apart, and it launches a missile. It says Rapid Dragon is the name for the USAF's program aimed at acquiring the capability to launch long-range missiles from cargo pallets dropped out of the back of cargo aircraft like the C-130J Hercules or the MC-130 Commando II or the C-17 Globemaster III. The pallets carrying missiles are dropped down from the cargo's planes ramp mid-air, after which the parachutes slow their fall, turning vertical, and electric control box on each pallet releases the missile one after another. So it's actually like it it drops it down, and it it's basically like a like one of those parachute guys you throw off off the second floor. It slows down, but it has a box, and it drops the missiles so they get the initial speed going down. And then they turn up and they go to their target. It seems kind of simple, actually, and I'm surprised they didn't have it before. But why did they have it? Well, they're possibly worried about the rest of their Air Force getting hit. And there are cargo aircraft up at all times. This also very well could be why they're practicing landing these same cargo ships on U.S. highways. If for some reason there was a strike out of nowhere that took out all of our bases, uh, all of our, you know, uh, airways, this would be something that would be able to handle that. So it's a question of, do you think that they're doing this because they believe there might be a first strike coming or a strike that is comes out of nowhere? I don't know, but it is a smart deterrence. These things would drop and then launch missiles from them. So basically, we could always have, unless they knocked out every single cargo airship out of the sky, and if unless they uh, knocked out every single airway, every single plane, we could still launch nukes at them. Even if they hit all of our silos, found all of our submarines, did everything, this is just an extra step. What do you guys think about this? Let me know in the comments down below or give me a call at 2244 marf That's again, 2244 marf uh, Thank you, Franco LLC. Thank you for doing a PayPal. Uh, Survival Living, by the way, I, I didn't, I missed you the other day. Thank you so much for doing a PayPal. Linda P, thank you. Uh, LJPP, thank you so much. Uh, let's see here. Jacqueline L. Please stand your ground in the news world. God bless. Thank you, Jacqueline. I appreciate you. Emily H. Uh, Joanna H. Mona D. And Deplorable CB. Thank you so much. Uh, Brenda L. From last month. Linda P. Amanda B. Christy M. And Peter S. Thank you so, so much. Uh, Linda S. Thank you so much for your support over there. I appreciate it. And then Aunt Ginny from DLive says... Uh, thanks for all that you and Dex do to keep us informed, blessed, and feel better. And then remember, you can call in at two two four four zero zero Marf. Again, new callers definitely encouraged. Don't be afraid. And uh, Dex, by the way, I, I, I did. I believe I actually uh, had you silent, so I don't. I I didn't see the light or anything, and I I made sure. 
I don't think you were trying to talk to me, but if you were, I apologize. It was. Just... I, I'm here, and, and okay. no, it wasn't. Okay, I'm glad. I, I accidentally had that line muted, so I apologize. I was a bit, bit caught off guard um, by all of that, and I, uh, yeah. Chinese military experts alarmed by U.S.'s Air Force capability. Okay, well, never. sorry about that, guys. We actually loaded the real one. Hold on, let me cancel that out. And then suspected UFO shot down over Russia's Rostov Oblast. Uh, Dex, now I know you've got people loading up on the phones. Um, and there are people hitting, hitting you up right now. But if you could, I would love for you to pop in for a second. I know that we have Vinny up on deck. Could you possibly talk about the next two for a second? Yeah, I'm 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 here and yes, we're on the sus the UFO. Yes, over Russia. Uh, so crazy story, right? So uh the they're not sure exactly what this is. Um obviously uh with the definition of UFO, it's unidentified. Uh but the some lawmakers there are claiming it was some form of drone. Um I don't know that uh it, it it, that they'll really tell us what it is, but they reportedly shot down uh, what they're calling for now a UFO in the Rostov Oblast area near the border of UKR. Um, and this this happened on Tuesday. So that we're just now getting some of the information out on this. At least that's what they're reporting. So um, they're saying they urge everyone to remain calm, et cetera. Uh, but, you know, was this a, you know, was this something that they've never seen before? Was it, uh, you know, how do they, you know, how can they not identify it um, is part of the questions I guess we should ask. One of the quotes is, I urge everyone to remain calm uh, to ensure security, all forces and means are involved. The sky is covered um, with anti-aircraft defenses. Um, they, uh, that was Gubloff who said that according to a local news outlet, though he didn't explain what the UFO was other than it was shaped like a ball. So that's kind of an odd shape. Um uh, unless there's some sort of new tech that we haven't seen. Uh, but basically, they're claiming that there was this ball-like uh, device that they, you know, took down. So, um, you know, we'll we'll keep following it. I don't know. You know, it's one of those areas that you're not going to necessarily get really clear and concise information on. Um, but uh, it's also, you know, insightful. We've seen uh, potential things where they've suggested that UFOs have been involved when nukes were involved, like shutting down um, nuclear silos and turning them off and stuff like that. Um, it could be, you know, something like that. Uh, certainly some people are certainly going down that, that rabbit hole thinking that maybe there was some involvement there. Um, there's some sort of additional involvement here, or it's some sort of tech that the other side has just never seen before. And we've never publicized, although I don't think, uh, given the history of the type of equipment we've been sending to UKR, it's not necessarily the state of the art. I think the probably most state of the art would be the Patriot system, which isn't even there yet. Um, HIMARS being, being fairly state of the art, but it seems like most of what we send is older equipment. And a lot of it's donated from other countries because they're trying to get rid of their older equipment to get new equipment from us. So um, again, uh, we will keep following this and see if anything actually comes of it. If they've got the, you know, if they can somehow, find wreckage or claim it and tell us what it exactly is. I'm not holding my breath on it though. Uh, but it is an interesting claim coming from them. Uh, that's why we're talking about it. And we'll see, uh, we'll update on what they end up finding. And, uh, we will make sure to add it to the website to tonight's if we find another update or if they find out what it was. And then, uh, what ceasefire shells fly at UKR front despite Putin's truce? So, it was it was pretty clear the second that he said the truce, and UKR said, you know, oh, we're not gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna abide by that. And then the White House said that it was a cynical ploy, and it was hypocrisy. It said Russian and UKR forces exchanged artillery fire at the front line in UKR on Friday, even after Moscow said it has ordered its troops to stop sh for a unilateral truth that was firmly rejected by Kiev. Well, I, I guess you know if if they're going to continue firing on them, then I, I, I bet the truce didn't last too long, especially if the other side said no, we're going to continue attacking. So it's kind of no surprise 
it doesn't, you know, I don't, either side, there's, you know, you don't know what's actually true here, but it does say that President Vlad ordered the 36-hour ceasefire from midday on Friday to observe the Russian Orthodox Christmas, which happens on the 6th and 7th. And it said that UKR has said that it has no intention to stop fighting, rejected the perverted truth as a stunt by Moscow to buy time to reinforce troops that have taken heavy losses this week. It said, what ceasefire? Can you hear? Said a UKR soldier. By the way, there there's stupid lines back and forth. Like, I, maybe it's their culture, but both sides do the stupidest, like, insults and, like, you know, oh, I bet they were, you know, when the base blew up, they're like, I bet they were smoking too many Russian cigarettes. It's like, they have the weirdest, like, comments to each other. Um, and they, like, I guess they, they're making jokes. It's a, a war. It, it's always some sort of comment on both sides. It says Russia's defense ministry said its troop began observing the ceasefire at noon Moscow time along the entire line of contact, but said UKR had kept shelling up uh, populated areas and military positions. So whichever way you look at it, they're basically continuing doing it. Uh, if they really did do a ceasefire and UKR did not take it and say shelled Russian cities or Russian you know soldiers, which it, it, we do have at least one to cover, you could see that as a possibility to have that end up escalating the situation. All of this is, you have to understand, we cover mainstream media so you guys have a chance to talk about it and to see what everybody else thinks. So when we read this out loud, you can almost immediately see what everybody is thinking about this story. It gives you a great great way to look at you know what do people really think about this not just take it for the narrative that is being pushed through whoever's writing it you get to look at other people's opinion about it that's why this is all there uh by the way somebody i guess you guys saw said somebody like the the sky is falling by the way i i don't get uh folks that, that say that all of this is like the sky is falling stuff and i i won't address it more than this First of all, if somebody is here watching my content, you're doing it voluntarily and you have searched me out to find it. Uh, technically, this has been the kind of stuff that, you know, people talked about before World War II and World War I. And people told them the same thing. People told me the sky was falling when I said, hey, there's going to be this demic and it looks like they're, they're, there's plans going on as if we are absolutely 100% going to have some sort of V go around and get everybody sick. They said the sky was falling then too. As far as like, I, I just don't get it. If you don't like scary movies, don't watch scary movies. If you don't like predictive uh, thoughts and, and opinions on what may happen in the future then don't watch it. It's as simple as that. You're an adult. You make your own choices. Uh, it's people are offended that... Uh, I, and I think, you know what it is? Is I think that maybe there are some... There are others that really do do that and and really hurt people. And those same people were hurt by some other creator and then found out that they were a jerk. And then they're personally offended and they feel like they've got to go on a warpath against all of us. And basically they're trying to say, oh, you know, this it's like somebody getting dumped and then they're a jerk to the rest of their spouses, right? It's like they got, treat bad, they got treated bad by one person, so then through the rest of their relationships, they're a crappy person too. It, it carries over. If, if a guy is messed up to a girl, then the girl carries that to all of her relationships and vice versa. It's the same thing here. They get, maybe they do actually get fooled by some idiot on YouTube and then they carry that over to the whole niche and they think that everybody's a bad person. Everybody's trying to, to trick you and fool you into thinking this or thinking that. We don't tell you what to think here. We tell you, you should question everything. And I'm not saying it's the end of the world. I'm saying my opinion is that it is definitely the end of an era and that we are going to have World War III. That's my opinion. You have your opinion. I have mine. But it's not the sky is falling. It's not the end of the world. I don't talk about how lizard people are coming down off of uh, uh, ramps and going to steal us or anything. I'm talking about real facts based on information that it keeps coming out and it keeps going along the same pattern and the pattern is getting so much more clear. I don't see how people aren't seeing this. We are going into a world war. 
and it, there's physical evidence of it besides all the MSM. There's actual troops and military in our group telling us they're moving troops all over the world. What will it take to get these people that say the sky is falling to think that it is? Will it literally be their roof falling in on them after a missile hits their house? Probably. But I bet if you told somebody in another country that actually has missiles going over their head, I think they would laugh at that because their sky is actually falling. But we are so spoiled here, we don't think anything can happen to us. We feel so protected and we feel so comfortable. But just watch. It's unfortunate when, you know, we'll have the the fall of Rome and, and people will be caught off guard by it and they won't see it coming. You've had plenty of warning. It's kind of your own fault if you don't have your own prep. Uh, all right, and then let's move on. We're going to get our next caller on and we're going to talk about the Armed Forces of UKR hit. Vlad? stationing point near Crimea. So they actually took, during this whole 36-hour thing, uh, they ended up striking and taking lives. We haven't seen what was going to happen there. Uh, Dex, will you get our next caller? It looks like Vinny is on the uh, on the phone. And while we get Vinny on, I do want to remind you guys, the X2 is going to be shipping out pretty soon here. They're getting another batch of lithium. The X2 is an all-built-in-one solar generator that is uh, it's about a, equivalent to a, uh, one of the Flex 1500 batteries uh, plus about a third as far as the capacity. It's an amazing system as far as it can actually be dual linked. So if you do need like super, super output, you can actually uh, dual link two of these units. But just one alone is most for uh, probably good enough for almost everybody as far as getting by. Uh, you can actually hook up solar panels to this and have unlimited power. Uh, what these do is you get power from either the wall charging it like a huge giant power bank. Uh, or you have solar panels, and then it keeps that power on demand uh, stored inside of the lithium cells. The great part about the solar generators is that they are silent. They go stealth, meaning you're not going to have a huge motor running in your backyard during an SHTF situation where every uh, looter and robber from f four blocks away knows that you have power when nobody else does. That is a huge problem, and it's been solved by solar. I definitely think you should have both. If you, if a, in a dream scenario, you should have both gas and solar, because then you are covering all bases. But another thing is, is you don't have to pay five dollars a gallon for gas for these. They don't have any. You can charge them with your wall, and then get yourself some solar panels over time. Uh, these can uh, actually do all sorts of cool things. The Flex 1500 is the system I have. I'm waiting on my X2. I also have the LT, which is the small version. It's about this big, uh, 350 watt hours. This, each battery is really easy. It's 1,000 watt hours each battery, and you can uh, expand it up to 96 batteries. So you can potentially have 96 thousand watt hours uh, if you need it most people don't though because when they have their panels out that by next morning any power they may have used they're going to be making up or they were using it while charging it at the same time with their solar panels out uh, go to marfuglenews.com slash energy uh, check it out it is one of the best systems out there it is definitely one of the most modular it works like legos they stack and you can take it portable or you can make it into a more of a permanent setup. Not to mention they make all sorts of low watt uh, accessories. Uh, for example, instead of just plugging in a regular lamp, you can actually get their low watt LED lights that are so bright. One of them can light a whole room. You get two or three of them, three chained together it could light a field and it's like 30 watts, less than 30 watts to power the thing, which means you're going to get more out of uh, more time out of your uh, generator. Also, they make low wattage uh, stoves and all sorts of other electrical uh, things that you can get covered, and it can be protected by an EMP shield, which means that you will actually be able to have that after EMP strikes or a CME. So check that out. Go to marfuglenews.com slash energy. Use the code marfugal to save upwards of $170, and you will end up helping our independent channel at the same time. All right, let's get... Uh, Let's get our next caller on the phone. Is it Vinny? Do we have Vinny? First time caller. Hey, Morph. It's Vinny, yeah. Hey, what's going on? So you wanted to talk about uh, Fireball on November 6th. Yeah, you know, and as I was listening, I have a couple other things I would like to 
touch on, which have to kind of do with stuff that you were talking about in previous articles. So I saw a fireball in the sky. I live out here in Las Vegas. Uh, the thing that was different about this fireball is I saw this during the daytime. So I've seen three fireballs in my life. The first one was at nighttime. It was a distinctly green one. It lit up bright, and then it had like a trace, almost like Back to the Future, where you kind of seen a, a, a trail, not of smoke, but of some type of residue or some type of streak of light. Um, the second one was in the night as well, a similar instance, but a different color was blue. And the third one that occurred that just happened on November 6th of this past year, um, it happened during the day. And that was what was uniquely different is I've never seen a fireball in my life during the day. I'm a approximately 40 years old. So to see it in the light had to be very, very bright. Um, and it seemed lower and in that it was going on a different trajectory as other fall fireballs I've seen. They seem a lot higher in the sky as they fall, as this one kind of seemed more shooting in an angle. So are, are you questioning if it was even a fireball at all, or if it was like some sort of missile or some sort of test? Uh, which you're you're out of Nevada, right? Oh. So aren't you by some testing facilities? Yes, I'm in Las Vegas. So Las Vegas is surrounded by two military bases. There's one right outside the city, and there's one deeper, kind of farther towards California. So there was recently a UFO sighting in Las Vegas. This one took place right over the stratosphere. If people don't know what that is, stratosphere is the hotel that has – it looks like, I guess, a, a needle or the, the saddle, uh, Seattle needle, which is, you know, they have a roller coaster on top and they have a, um, a hotel that has that structure. This took a place, I think, a week ago. It was um, above them. It's, it lasted for about an hour. And what people saw in the sky was a multitude of lights lighting up. Um, and, and, and from what I could gather, there is different technology that is being used, I would say, that could be more... I would say military S technology that's being used that could be misidentified for something in the sky, especially being at night. If you could picture perhaps an item that's even a drone, if you saw a drone that was painted black, if you saw it at night, it would be easy to unidentify it's an actual drone. So, you know, seeing something like that in the middle of the sky, it, it makes me wonder perhaps that could be some type of military um, craft. There's, there's, been sightings of military craft that have been in triangular in shape. So I would like to touch on the, the, the news story that is recent of Russia. Um, perhaps that could be some type of military device that they've captured. I, I know you said it was round, but I've seen the videos of that, that Vegas UFO look like it was um, some type of shape and there was definitely uh, lights in different patterns. So greens, blues, and yellows. So I'm trying to tie that together with the Ukraine thing. So maybe there's an implementation of some type of newer technology, uh, maybe something that has to do with anti-drone technology. Be that it's so close to the battlefield, I'm assuming maybe it's that direction. And, and perhaps that's something that's misidentified with some of these, um, these, these things that people are seeing in the sky. I always say keep your eyes to the sky. I'm watching television right now, and I'm watching the sky right now. I mean, you could, it's amazing what you see if you're just keeping your eyes open. Yeah, especially if you look up all the time, every time you are out at night. Now, we get a lot of cloud cover here, but it's like at any time there's a clear sky, I can't get out of the car without just sitting there for five minutes and watching, whether it be satellites or whatever questionable thing. I'm the kind of person who's always like, wait, 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 wait look at that. Oh, it moved. And then my wife's like, no, that's not moving. And I'm like, ah, stigmatism. But if you keep your eyes up long enough, you will see something. And I feel like, Anybody that looks up has seen something that's not explainable. I've seen plenty of things up there that I'm like, that has to be military or something off, off, you know, not of this world. So I, I believe you're right. Thank you. I, I just an idea. And, you know, I've been all over the country and I would say I've seen more unidentified things on the West coast than I have on the East coast. I don't know if that's uh, any identifier, but you know, there's a lot going on, and I do want to say this is a new year. I'm I'm very thankful to be alive at this time because there is so much going on. There's a lot of turmoil in the world, and, you know, believe it or not, we are all losing people. The fact that we're all here and we're all present at this time, it, it's very important that we're, we're – I feel thankful to be alive to witness some of these major events that are happening right now. Yeah, it's, it's something – it's kind of like a car crash, right? It's most people, they don't ever want to see a car crash, but they also can't look away. It's kind of that kind of uh, thing for the last three or four years. 
also there is something that is inside of us that when when the the, the v hit and the lockdown hit I think it changed people too. It, 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 some people actually preferred what happened during the lockdowns and things. And that's not exactly a good thing, but all of us, it, it was, it was exciting in a way. So I think that partly some people are almost agree. wanting this to happen because they have been waiting all of these years for something bad to happen. And they're just like waiting for something horrible to happen. I think that we should all try to be positive about it, but also try to be in the middle like not ride the roller coaster up and down be prepared but also not let it take us over and for so long a lot of us just want to see some type of change and there's a lot of stuff that could go in, in the right direction and as long as the sun is shining you know there's an opportunity to make great change in this world and also on the ufo uh thing there's also ufos that have been in volcanoes and i know you touched on the volcano in the previous a story way back there's been ufos that have gone into y- volcanoes and also ufos that have been with uh nuclear arms so maybe they're harnessing the energy of those type of equipment that's that's another thing that could go into this whole equation so i feel like you know being alive in this time some of these things are kind of coming to light and the fact that there's a story this evening that there's something discovered in russia is completely fascinating well, Vinny, thank you and great call. Again, the UFOs over volcanoes and things, we have uh, Mount Rainier here and people see sightings of things floating around it all the time. Uh, there's, of course, actually, I think there's local forums dedicated to it and people are always taking pictures and finding something flying near it. Of course, half the time they say it's, you know, a hel- helicopter or a reflective dish or something. But I have I've personally yeah. seen stuff flying around Mount Rainier. Well, thank you for calling in, Vinny, and it's oh, for a, sure. a pleasure to have you on, and, and thank you, and don't be a stranger, okay? Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Have a, have a blessed New Year. All right. That was Vinny from Nevada. Have you seen something like what Vinny was talking about? Send it to us, marfuglenews.com slash play my video. All right. And then armed forces of UKR hit Russian stationing point near, I mean, tens of soldiers injured general staff so we got one point of it we will probably get the other side of it soon the armed forces of ukr launched an attack on the stationing point of the occupiers in the village of harivlivka drula in the south of Kherson oblast up to a hundred injured soldiers were taken to the hospital again this is in the Kherson oblast so the apparently there's still occupiers and not fully back there but i'm sure it's over that uh one piece of land and it says a strike on the Russian occupying forces in Higher Lifka, Druha, and Kurson Oblast uh, was confirmed. At the moment, there is information that up to 100 injured soldiers were taken to local hospitals. The information concerning the perished is being established. The UKR aircraft launched the attack on the area of concentration of the Vlad's uh, occupiers. The aftermath of the attack is being established. Units of the rocket forces and artillery of the defense forces of UKR launched attacks on two areas. And it says the occupiers launched one missile attack and 12 attacks using multiple launch rocket systems, including on the civil infrastructure of Donetsk and Dniprotvesk Oblasts. The threat of Persian, uh, further Russian aircraft and missile attacks remains all throughout UKR. In order to maintain their offensive potential and replenish losses, the occupiers continue to conduct mobilization measures, which we've been covering. They are mobilizing massive amounts of soldiers for another push. And we've talked about all of the different comments by extremely high level people saying that it's about to get really bad there and it's about to escalate. We're hoping it doesn't. But again, all of us are, you know, we're all sitting in the same shoes watching and waiting for this thing to pop off. And thanks to TikTok, UKR is raining missiles on Russian troops with pinpoint accuracy and to a devastating effect. I'm surprised there's so much talk about TikTok being a, uh, a reason. And then there was the story that Vlad blamed on his soldiers by using their phones. This is somewhat they they may be trying to say that this is some sort of confirmation of it or that the UKR are using the videos done on TikTok to confirm it. Uh, Dex, now let's see here. I know that we have somebody lined up here. Hold on. Um, the Dex, I saw you hey, just added a Congress video. And then also 
Did you want to talk on this? Because you t- previously talked on the whole TikTok and uh, the videos. We we covered how uh, experts said that it wasn't very likely that that was the reason. Now there's kind of more information coming out. Go ahead. It, yeah, it, it, we just keep going back and forth on this. But if you didn't need another reason, to, or if there wasn't eno- enough reasons not to have TikTok in your country, here's here's one for Vlad, because apparently that's the reason they're using. You know, they said it was cell phones. They said they were able to track it. And now they're saying it's because they were using TikTok. Um, I, I don't know if they're just making this stuff up as they go, trying to get, you know, headlines and stories. But apparently, um, you know, that is the new reason uh, that they're saying that, that that one attack went down was because the soldiers were u- were busy using TikTok. So um, I, I don't, you know, I don't know wh- what to take of this. We have seen, you know, obviously information is, is you know, uh, lit up uh, with location data, especially on social media. Um, I'm not as familiar with TikTok. It's been over a year now since I've been on it, I believe, since I last deleted it. But I'm sure like all the other social media, they they typically, you know, by default, take your location unless you turn it off. So um, maybe that's the the way they were giving away their, their location by uh, either posting or uh, watching, although I don't think you give up your location when you're watching, but kind of crazy. Um, and yes, I did give you a link to a video. Um, this just happened. So this is breaking. We, we talked earlier in the show about the vote. It's the 14th vote. Um, it got down to the end and uh, Gates was not there. Matt uh, was not there in the beginning and the two people bobart and gates held out and did a uh, present vote and he missed by one and th- everyone had flown in they had they'd come back at 10 o'clock at night they had assumed that they had the right number of people so people were heated and upset and apparently one representative and it's being reported it was mike rogers um had the appearance of lunging or going towards gates and they had to pull him back uh, so that's what you can sort of see it in the video, at least see them him pulling them back. Uh, but that's kind of the craziness that's going on in our house right now as we speak. Um, I think they're probably going to adjourn again because it doesn't seem like they're going to get anywhere. Uh, but they were down to literally just one more number was all they needed. It's just a circus. This is a clown show. Um <laughs> No, and it doesn't seem like any of the people I've seen, they don't want, uh, is anybody convinced that this isn't just all like one big paid circus? Like there's no, these, none of these people represent the people. None of these people have our best interests. They have their own interests in mind. The fact that money is so tied in directly with politics, there's absolutely no way that we can get proper representation of the people, period. There's always going to be this thing where even if there is a good guy that gets into office, the second that it starts getting these offers for money to represent different uh, groups or different policies, they go, oh, here's a million dollars if you let us sell alcohol in Costco, it, it, that kind of thing. Oh, well, we'll make it. We'll put it in an offshore account for you in the Cayman Island. Nobody will know about it. And all we need is we just want to be able to sell alcohol in the stores. That's just an example, and I'm pretty sure that's what happened here, but it's nuts. Go ahead, Dex. It, it, you know, it's there's two simple things if they would just do it. If they put term limits in and get rid of the special interest money, if people couldn't bribe our politicians and they couldn't be career career politicians, life would be, we'd have a much better chance of having good representation. I, at least that's my personal opinion, um, you know, but take it, you know, a lot of people believe that. And it's funny that I think most people uh, probably a majority of people would believe that that would be the right way to run a government, but n- we can never get anybody in there that actually can do it. Because if they were going to go change that, who do you think is going to decide? The people that have been paying for, been paid for long, long years and sit in their ivory houses with their golden toilet seats and security guards and crazy weirdos uh, <laughs> uh, visiting the house and on, you know, uh, body cams, you know, holding hammers, but no, it's not going to happen. All right. And then 
We have journalists discover possible training ground for Russian operators with combat drones. You can guys can go over to the website to see a lot of this, but it says Radio Liberty's Project Donbass rally has found a possible location for the Vlad's uh, training ground for Shahad drone operators. The training ground is located approximately eight kilometers southeast of the State Center for Unmanned Aviation of the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation of the City of Koloma, Moscow Oblast. It says earlier, UK you, uh, journalists identified that Russia had sent its UAV operators to the I country in the Middle East for training under the pretext of participating in competitions. It says in August, four Vlad's military personnel took part of the Falcon hunting drone operator competition in uh, ran to the store. It says immediately thereafter, attacks by uh, made kamikaze drones in the UK. Our cities began. All military personnel identified in the investigation served in the 924th State Center of Unmanned Aviation of Russia. It says this center is the only one in the structure of the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation that trains drone operators and is based in the city of Kolomna, uh, Military Unit 2924. It says, however, flights are conducted elsewhere. So... You could probably bet if they say they think that they know where it is, that they're probably going to, there's probably going to be some sort of strike. And then new US, U.S. sanctions target supply of the Iranian drones to Russia. Funny timing. And then it says uh, the United States on Friday issued new sanctions targeting suppliers of the I country drones that Washington said have been used to target civilian infrastructure in UKR during the conflict with Russia. Russia has been attacking vital UKR infrastructure since October with barrages of missiles and drones, causing sweeping power blackouts as cold weather sets in. They had to add that part in there because, as we're told, there are people just like us in freezing temperatures over there because of this horrible these horrible events. Uh, go ahead, Dex. You know, we reported the great expense that they were having to pay to try to take down uh, these drones, um, anywhere uh, upwards of five hundred thousand, uh, but even even like ten, twenty thousand, depending on what they were using, and it was getting costly. And so, I think the it makes at least it, it's an obvious next step is how do they stop the flow uh, to Vlad, and how do they stop the production if they can? And so that's that's the the tactic here is to see if they can, you know, not have to spend so much money in this expensive munitions to take these out, if they can stop it uh, at the source, so to speak. It won't work. Um, I also predict that there's going to be some sort of strike at a training ground. Obviously, that would probably be in there as well if they found it. And before we talk about Daniloff on Russian truce, uh, way with your drunk, no negotiations. Uh, let's go over to our next call. Uh, let's see. We looks like we have Josh, and Josh is going to be talking about the antennas in Utah and pay attention to the north border. Uh, well, we get Josh on the phone. Just a reminder: if you haven't already, make sure to go over and get some prep food from MarfugalNews.com/prep. When you go and support any of our affiliates, it ends up giving us a commission and giving you a big discount. You can get $200 off on the three-month supply. Again, it is extremely affordable. For three months, you can get it for about $600. That breaks down to about $200 a month. It's freeze-dried food that will last 25-plus years on the shelf, which means, again, if it triples in price like it did the last three years, in three years from now, you'll still have 22 years left on the shelf, and you would have saved about three times the money. Go to marfuglenews.com slash prep. You can also get smaller packages like the month-long uh, month supply for $70 off. And then, of course, you can get single uh, single units of, uh, of course, uh, Mylar-packed bags of freeze-dried food. You can also get the meat packet. There's all sorts of great things over there, so make sure to go check it out. Uh, somebody mentioned earlier Alexa Pure Pro. That is the water filtration system on the site. Make sure to go over and check that out. It is a professional grade gravity fed filtration system, uh, which again would be needed if you were trying to filter out all the nasty stuff if we didn't have, uh, you know, drinkable potable water. So make sure to go over and check that out. Marfuglenews.com slash prep. It helps support us. At the same time, it helps prepare yourself. The, these things are good for any kind of disaster it does not have to be uh end of the world or the sky is falling it could be a blackout or a storm or a snow in it's definitely great to have on hand 
All right, let, let's get our next caller on the phone. It looks like we have Josh, a.k.a. Sweatna Ministries. Josh, are you there? How you doing? Uh, um, yes, sir, I'm here. How you all doing? So what's going on? You wanted to talk Can you hear me? about the antennas. Yes, sir. So I was sitting here thinking and pondering on it when you went over it and just thinking about all the things that have been going on. Well, it got me thinking if the officials really don't know what's going on with it, as they say, we haven't been paying attention to the, the border of north of us. We've been paying attention to the southern border, but not the northern border. I know it was about a year or two ago you all had talked about how um, Xi's country has um, personnel up north. And there was some sort of deal that was made or something. A treaty, yeah. Where right. they could bring in, yeah, a treaty of some sort. And it got me thinking, Xi's country bringing people into the U.S. as refugees rather than to make it look like they're civilians. And maybe I know there's been talks about Vlad's country uh, targeting uh, the Y-Stone National, you know. And, uh, well, I, I was looking at the map and when you want to put pressure on something as big as that park, you do it from one of the side views. Well, right there in Utah, uh, that's right there on the tip of where some of the magma actually intrudes into. I don't know if you all have ever looked at a map like that or not, but... And if you want to put pressure on one of those, it wouldn't take the antennas. The antennas would be the beacon, however. Are you following? Yeah. So something to trigger something to happen? Is that what you're, is that what you're saying? Pretty much like a beacon, like a, a rally point per se, except for you're not using smoke. Huh. And if there's a dozen or more popping up at a time, they got to keep them going. And what's quicker than a smaller antenna that you can put up quickly and not be spotted during the night? So you're saying it? There it was possibly like G or some secret group is putting them up for some sort of other reason. G and Vlad. G and Vlad. Correct. I think they're working together just like up in uh, north to Alaska, <laughs> so to speak, off the coast. How hard would it be for them to actually bring in personnel from the north the correct way without being detected? Well, just to explain, too, what you were talking about is – there was a treaty where Canada basically said, hey, you don't have to tell anybody when you bring troops in, as long as it's protecting one of your national interests in Canada, you're able to basically, your troops don't have to check in with our local police even. Uh, this is what their even local lawmakers were saying, like, what is this? Like, why are you guys doing this? Uh, these troops didn't even have to check in. They could come in. Uh, no record of it, not check in with local police. And as long as there, if there was a bigger property that was owned by the country of China, they were able to station them there and do whatever they needed to do. And some even daily mail posted that basically they were training tens of thousands of soldiers there. And this is right above us, right? Um, this, this is one right. of those stories that kind of just, washed away and people forget about but that's why we archive things and i think that's why our audience is good because we've basically said don't forget about these things these things could come back and bite us later and it also could pop up in the msm later after we've talked about it and after we've basically figured it out then msm will cover it again 
But it's like they'll only cover it if people are talking about it and they'll come up with the logical reason or the cover or whatever. It, it People are still talking about this. Um, you know, Trudeau has made it look like, oh, they're totally against them right now. But yet they've invited them to do trainings with their soldiers and do all sorts of stuff right above us. There's technically our adversary. What are they doing? Yeah. Yeah, and then you got Cuba, who made the deal with Xi, and then you have Nicaragua, which made the deal with Vlad. Yep. And there's weird so, weird things popping up in something... Cuba. Weird things are popping up all over Cuba, satellite dishes and spy things. And then the, the Xi has got these police stations all over NATO countries. Almost every country that he has it in is not his ally, but ours. It's like, come on. And that's with those antennas popping up there. What? What? How hard is it? How far fetched is it to think that those antennas are not the same antennas? Huh. Well, interesting theory. Just this. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it wouldn't be too far fetched to think it because they're popping up out out of nowhere, just like these antennas here in uh, Utah. But anyways, that's all I had to really talk about. Well, Josh, a.k.a. Sweat and Ministries, thank you so much for calling in, and don't be a stranger, okay? Yes, sir. God bless you all. And uh, like I told Dex, I got um, a Christmas gift for you guys coming soon. So. All right. Well, thank you so much. And again, Josh, don't be a stranger. Yes, sir. Love to hear from you again. Bye-bye. That was Sweat and Ministries. Make sure to say hi to him in chat. Uh, he is, I, I think he's been here almost every show. So thank you so much, Josh. Thank you for everybody that shares our show out and gets it out there. Uh, Dex, go ahead. Hey, I just have a, a, a little bit of a uh, update on what's going on in our, our Congress. Um, it's kind of, a, it's, a, it's a monumental and crazy event at the moment, but apparently because he lost uh, that time, a lot of people were leaving and now they're trying to get them to come back because they couldn't actually adjourn. So now they're holding yet another vote. And if this goes through and not enough of the um, right side party shows up, it could actually go to the other side. That would be the first time this has happened where a majority uh, didn't choose the speaker since 1839 when James K. Polk uh, was a member of the left side and was elected. Um, so this is kind of a crazy event that's actually unfolding right now. It, it, nothing may come of it, but we'll, uh, we're, we're monitoring it real time. It's literally like these guys are never in, in session at 1147 at night. This is nuts. Um, so what, what, what do most people want the, the, to happen, right? If people don't want him, who do they want? And I, I would probably guess they don't want somebody from the other side. So what would be like a dream thing for to happen here? What would be the best case scenario? Yeah, I, I, the only thing I can think of is that they're, the ones that were holding out were, I, I can't imagine they really thought they were going to get him not to win but they were holding out like you said for some sort of negotiation like they wanted something for themselves or for their constituents i, sh I should say because ideally that's what they should be doing um and you know there's al always that negotiation going on and that's exactly what we're seeing happen but now it's to the point where <laughs> they might lose the whole uh leadership position if if enough people actually got on airplanes thinking it was over and they couldn't turn them around and get them back in. And they've already started the counting process again. So the they, they, they were quick to move. And I think it was a strategy on the other side's part, too. I just I want to point out what is up in the corner here. It, it, it says they fear that the R side of the aisle will bang, bang up Congress. Is this a setup for a fantastic Freddy? Like, what the heck is going on here? Um, I wish I wish I could be watching this because it, it's kind of like what happened on a certain day before when I was watching that live. It just something just smelled fishy from the second it started from the video cutting out to the audio being left on. So if you have to defend yourself with your chair and it's like, don't you have a plan for this kind of thing and secret rooms and a 
evacuation route and uh, <laughs> one of the most protected uh, places in the world. Like, come on. Uh, but yet yeah, we'll sit here like like the scene in uh, in uh, what is that Austin Powers where the steamrollers coming. And it's going so slow, and they just keep screaming like, ah! (laughs) Too long? Probably. But you get my point. Something smells fishy about the whole thing. And then Danilov on Russian truce takes away your junk. Take away your junk. No negotiations. They're just such... They're all so tough. You uh, will not hold any negotiations with Russia regarding the so-called Christmas ceasefire. Says, and to whom are they offering this truce? There is a fairly simple solution. They pack their suitcases, take all of their junk, and go to Russia. We will not negotiate with them or any truth. It has nothing to do with us. Basically, uh, this is the uh, the same gentleman we talked about the other night. Uh, Dex. uh, They're basically saying, we'll just get out of here. There's Right now, there's no... It doesn't seem like there's any opportunity for the two sides to come to the table because they both just are adamant about having, you know, either no willingness to do it, or if they do, their stipulations are so great that it doesn't even make sense. So uh, this is just, you know, it's probably just all for show, um, if anything, and but they're not, there's no negotiation going on right now at all. Um, or that's part of the the stage, so to speak, if you think the whole thing's orchestrated. One of the two. It's all one big circus. Uh, Stephen McMahon, for starters, they would need to outlaw all paces and lobbies. All they are is bribe factories. Yep, exactly. It, exactly what exactly what Dex said in other words. Which wouldn't be exactly. Bandy Bear, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the support, Bandy Bear. Thanks for stopping in again. Northern Girl Hobby is one of my fave channels. Doing, Keep doing uh, the things, folks. Appreciate you, Marf. Well, thank you from Canada. Uh, I'm sure you have heard about all of those things we were just talking about. Nana of Montana says, God to run. Thank you, Adam Dex Mods and Fugal Fam. May God bless. Take care and be safe. Prayers to those who have lost loved ones. Uh, which again, if you did join us late, uh, Mr. Gentle Moss called in and Miss Gentle Moss has passed. She's been a long time in our chat. She's been a long time in the Fugle fam. And it's very, very sad to hear about. Stephen McMahon, take heart, Adam. Somebody has to sound the Jeremiah's. You are the only one rhyming with common sense. Well, thank you, Stephen. And um, I appreciate your other comments. Not on Super Chat. Thank you. Hi, Marv from Port Orchard, Washington. Hey, Jonathan Fish. Jonathan Fish, thanks for joining us. And, and again, thank you for your support. Let's see here. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Adam, Dex, Mods, and Fugle Fam. Nice seeing you hug and kiss the ones you love. You never know when you'll never have the chance again. Keep safe your way. I agree. Every single day, you don't know what's going to happen with my uh, with my mom. She, We don't know what happened, but by the time my sister one of my sisters got there to try to give her uh she actually kept her alive with cpr and she had basically she was already brain dead and it was it was a it was really rough and i can only imagine what she goes through being the one to to be there and find her like that she had the same kind of thing at a heart attack where looked like she was not breathing for 10 minutes 20 minutes they said so yeah, I I know the feeling and and um, just hoping that everybody heals and if you've lost someone this year, I I am so sorry. It's just it's part of something that you know nobody else can really tell you anything to make it feel any better. You just have to take it day by day. And then, uh, Dex, go ahead. 
I was going to say, Adam, I got one more picture. Uh, um, it's in screener. It's a different angle of what we tried to show in that video earlier. And it's this has got to be the photo moment of the year so far, I think, especially when it comes to these the circus show going on there. Okay, let's see. This is uh, Ginger Gibson status. Hold on. Let's see, if... I, I I just see this on the front page of papers tomorrow. Although it's Saturday, but still. Oh yeah, like this is they're printing this six a.m. Oh my gosh! Wait wait wait, who's lunging? I, it looks like he's taking him out. Look at this. Yeah, that was the guy in the video that I, I showed that was moving forward, and that was the guy behind him is the one who pulled him back. But this angle shows where he literally put his hand around his mouth. What in the world is going on? That looks like a hairpiece. And, and and mind you, like everybody, this they were they had adjourned earlier today, and they they are they negotiated they thought they had everything they needed and they convinced everyone to come back at 10 o'clock tonight to do this vote and when they were done with it they were going to you know um swear in everybody they would go through the ceremony right because nobody's in everybody's just sitting there there is no congress until they get past this first thing um so uh you know it's kind of a big deal and everybody was mad that they showed up they came in late they all got there to do this and it didn't go through. Wow. This is, and this is all to replace uh, Nancy, which we all know why uh, the real reason she stepped down. I mean, gone. All right. Well, and, and, and by the way, I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what'll play out. I can't watch it while we're doing the show, but the first round, uh, gates and someone else what the, the trick they do is they leave and so when they're called because they're called alphabetically or by state i can't remember which order but if they skip them then they call them again at the end so those holdouts were sort of like trying to be the last ones called so they could see what the numbers were to make a decision on what way they were going to go it's kind of a little tr this is insanity this is just nuts This, this, I smell something coming. Prediction in the next 24 hours, some crazy event's going to happen and who knows. I hope that that, that post right there, the, uh, I hope that they're not going to try to fantastic Freddy something. All right. And then thank you, Texas Rob 49. I hope you're still around. Kelly 2334, Michelle K. Uh, Scott is Stevie. Thank Scottish Stevie. Thank you so much. Uh, Poco Loco. I love the people on here. You are the best. Kimbria, Beer Juice, Kelly2334, Texas Rob, thank you for the Ninja Gini. Looks like the chest is back. Adam and Dex Rock. It only took uh, like a year, I think. That would. I'm glad it is. That's really awesome. And then Texas Rob, thank you. Uh, Kimbria, again, thank you. Priscilla R. Uh, of course, Off the Cuff News, thank you for being here. And Texas Rob, thank you for gifting out uh, multiple subscriptions to Birdbanger. Uh, to off the cuff to it looks like several people got a badge from you so thank you and then dfw jackie sky house and everybody else that's over there on d live rocking it thank you so much and i appreciate you and then russia taking on uk our nuclear plant to hit a clean energy future uh this is also over on the website uh dex do you want to just go over this real quick and then the really it, scary it, ones it, next it, yeah so you know, when you think about the, um, you know, everybody was trying to turn off um, nuclear power, especially in Europe. They turned it off and they actually started to turn it back on when they ran out of power. Um, but the argument is for those that are pro um, having these plants that, you know, they've fought so many different obstacles about whether or not it's clean. You know, what does it take to manage it? And, you know, of course, if they run correctly, if you manage the waste correctly, I guess in theory, it's a good source. Um, but the more blemishes you put on it, the harder it is to convince the world to keep using it or to even build more. Um, so what they're basically saying is that for those that look at this as uh, an option that some will argue is not clean and others will argue it is clean, that having these nuclear plants not only has the risk of if they fail or do something wrong and have their own catastrophes, 
but they also become weaponized in a conflict. And that's exactly what happened and is going on throughout this conflict. We've seen it back and forth with both UKR and Vlad's side, um, whether it was the conflict going on around it, putting it in danger, or the conflict of somebody taking it over. And then you've got all the risks that go with that. So it's just laying an additional level of negativity, so to speak, towards the whole notion of potentially uh, furthering and using nuclear as a power source. And uh, Dex, just the update, update, update you. Man, people are going nuts on Twitter. Uh, Jake Sherman just tweeted, the tension in this room is insane. <coughs> Dr. Owens, who's <coughs> looks like he's also there, says Super Bowl level stuff. This looks like it's just going to... Uh, Fern Gully says uh, Gates and Bobert aren't going to decide it. They should be focusing on the other four. Unbelievable. This is going to be a long two years, says TJ. Man, this is just nuts. Everybody is... Um, People are betting on when a fist fight's going to break out. This is the foreshadowing, Adam, to what the other Gates said. Remember? He oh, predicted, oh. right? He said oh. things were going to get crazy and come, you know, next uh, presidential time, there was going to be a civil conflict because of this. So this could very well be the beginning of this type of behavior and division and lack of uh, ability for our government to actually work together. By the way, they tried to fact check this and they couldn't because it's literally what he said and it was on tape. I think afterwards, maybe he's again, I wonder what uh, Snopes says right now, because it said that they were still investigating um, what if, what does it mean? Unproven. Okay. Claim. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding? By the way, when this first happened, they were saying that they were still investigating on, on that box. Now it says unproven. He said the damn thing. Oh my gosh. It says, I admit that political polarization may bring it, uh, bring it all to an end. We're going to have a hung and a civil conflict. Okay. Oh gosh, I, I I just tweeted the other day. I said uh, Veritas. Should, I, I I hope somebody busts up some of these uh, these these companies. Okay, these ones that are like totally. I guarantee you, there must be so many emails secretly that are you know so many scandals. Imagine what's in their top level email boxes. Who's in there? Who's who's telling them what? I mean, it's just nuts. That and I, I feel bad. Uh, Tacoma, local city here, is what produced that website. Oh, and if you want to go next level stuff, this is just absolutely insane. Let's see if this loads. Probably doesn't. They're probably like, oh, we know what's loading here. Study, study using mosquitoes to deliver the... Has uh, G researchers buzzing. They're talking about uh, harnessing mosquitoes to deliver things into endangered wildlife, right? Wonder if it could work for anything else. It says a team of G researchers have harnessed mosquitoes to deliver re-engineered Vs that could help save animal populations. Basically, the the stick only done by actual mosquitoes. Now we've talked about how they talked about um, robot mosquitoes delivering things like this. But why even do that when you could actually engineer one that has it in it? Dex, what do you think about this? This is uh this is this is something we actually predicted in a prior show of them being able to do, and there was rumors that they were trying. Now they're basically talking about it. Do you think this is gonna happen anytime soon? Oh, nothing could go wrong with this scenario, could it? I mean, come on. This is like the most sane thing you could ever think of because it's not like these insects could just randomly show up in other places. 
or, uh, you know, mutate and do something wrong or, yeah, I mean, come on, this is, I don't know. I mean, we've, we've seen, we've seen the uh, genetically modified uh, mosquitoes in the sense that they try to release, uh, what is that? Was it female mosquitoes that all can't female. reproduce? So it, it basically distracts all the males. So then it lowers the population, stuff like that. You know, even that's a little on the spooky side, but this is a little bit out there in my opinion. Well, it's like uh, what's his face from uh, Jurassic Park saying, well, all the dinosaurs are female. Where could it go wrong? Right. Life has a way. Right. Life has a way. They literally did that, though. They engineered all female insects. And I heard that that didn't go so well either. It's like there's certain things that you shouldn't play God on. This, in my opinion, is one of them. All right. And then. Thank you, everybody over on DLive. Thank you, everybody on Rumble. Thank you, everybody on YouTube. I appreciate all of you guys. Uh, let's go over to the web only. We have more going on, plus updates on all of the stuff that's going on uh, right now that's playing out with Gates and with What's-His-Face. Uh, all of it's going down with McCarthy. Uh, Barbie Burns Fat, thank you, says, happy to catch you live. Appreciate y'all fighting. Uh Let's see here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Fighting the good fight. Still not 100 if I'm not an NPC. Def need to test the map edges to see if I glitch again. <laughs> thank you. And uh, Dex, let's go over the web only. There's lots of it. There certainly is. So go to marfuglenews.com. It's real simple. Click on the thumbnail for the show or uh, even easier on YouTube and Rumble. Just open up that description. Click on the show notes link. It takes you right here. You get through all the news that we just covered for you. And then you're going to run in this yellow bar that says overflow. This is where the rest of the story is. So lots of updates. There's some Elon updates going on here. Apparently, um, a reporter tried to uh, pose as a uh, senator and was verified and then uh, wasn't really that person, obviously, since they were doing it to see if they could get away with it and then um, made a big story about it um, and then got their account deleted because they weren't supposed to be doing that. But nevertheless, doesn't, doesn't it gives them the opportunity to create the story that they were able to pose as a senator. That's the kind of stuff we get with Elon, not him, but with the, the media against him. So we've got a lot of the updates that are there. Um, certainly updates uh, on what's happening in um, uh, with the Congress, but I think that stuff's even outdated as we've given you the live updates tonight, and it's getting crazy there. Um, uh, uh, the mother of Ashley, and you'll know the last name, uh, she got arrested for jaywalking, and that, that video that's out there is kind of crazy. So if you wanna if you wanna see that, um, there's uh, updates about other people trying to run in uh, 2024. Mr. Bolton has made an announcement. That's uh, kind of a strange pick, but we'll see. Maybe maybe he can pull it off. I doubt it. Uh, that's my opinion. Um, definitely uh, some updates, like all the other stuff that's happening in the other updates. There's a lot of uh, little bits and pieces of media out there that gives you some insight to what's going back and forth in Vlad's country and in UKR. So we've got a handful of that there. So you want to get the rest of that story. Go ahead. Make sure you head over there. Um, of course, uh, some updates on the political side, which we already talked about. There's a new truck coming out that's going after the Tesla cyber truck. That's there. Um, a gnarly tiger fight video. If you haven't heard about that and you're it's probably not something you want to watch, but it was kind of one of those events that you don't get to see. It's rare, but it happened in front of uh, hundreds. And um, and then we've got updates as well as what's going on in uh, Xi's country and the uh, continuation of the um, CIV and the messages that are coming out from that. That and a lot of other things. There's stuff I didn't even tell you that's on there. So make sure you go there. We put it together for you every night. It's right there on the website. Uh, just click the link. It'll take you over and you can find the rest of the story. And then don't forget down below, Right after that, you'll find all the caller information there as well. Anyone who had a channel, their link is there. Go make sure you go give them some love. Tell them the Fugle fam sent you. And uh, again, marfuglenews.com. Wait, you're saying one of the Bush families got caught on a hot mic making an inappropriate joke? Oh, who would have known? That deja vu? Yeah, the same one too. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, wasn't he in the trailer with uh, T-Man? Wasn't that him? That was that, him. That was him, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Just, they're all, uh, they're all a bunch of clowns. All right, thank you guys. Learn your lesson once. Yeah, I, right? You would think. 
but no, because they don't care. They they're above that. They're they're U.S. royalty. That's that's how they think of themselves. All right, uh, Dex, thank you for your service tonight. Appreciate you. Much love. Great job, brother. Thank you to the mods. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody that's been here. Vincent Boogaloo. We've got Drop. Thank you, some dude. Sign digger. No Name 54. Thank you. Jungle Jim. Just in time. Uh, let's see here. No Name. Thank you again. I appreciate you. Z-Man Luke. Carol McLean. And uh, all of you, make sure to also subscribe to Marfugal Jams. The show is going to end here in a couple seconds. Uh, the chat continues over there for the shoutro. Uh, which, again, make sure to also check out marfuglenews.com slash friends. You can find all of the mods there and great channels and friends of ours. It is now time for the shout It's not an outro. It's not a shout-out. It's a shout -tro. Tonight is shout dedicated to Gentle Moss. 